Ultimate Team Coin needs, check out utcoinsforyou.com. There's a link in the description, and if you use the code CHEZ, you'll get yourself an extra 5% off. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again with another episode of the World Cup Squad Series here on my channel and of course on the Random FIFA Videos channel as well. So if you're watching over there, as always, feel free to check the link in the description to, uh, to my personal channel if you'd like to see more from me. And uh, if you're new for this series, then uh, basically what we do is we go through each of the teams that have qualified for the World Cup. We build a squad of... Uh, a particular nation, not necessarily a team that will be going to the uh, to the World Cup, it's just a squad of nationals, because uh, this particular series isn't so much about the team that we're building, it's more about the nation they're from and their affiliation and their history with the World Cup as a tournament. Just a quick mention of note that there are four informs in this side, as you can see, you've got Torresidis at right back from Roma, uh, the right winger is Salpangidis, uh, up top we have second inform at Mitroglu, and uh, at left wing we have the most expensive player which is in form, Giorgio Samaras, around about 130,000 coins he cost. Uh, in general, personally, I didn't enjoy playing with this team, I have to be completely honest, although a couple of players did stand out. Uh, Katsaranis, the, uh, the right central midfielder, was very, very solid, as was the goalkeeper as well. But anyway, let's get cracking with Greece's World Cup history. Now, unfortunately, they actually don't have a detailed and deep tradition in history with the World Cup as a, as a whole as a tournament. After not entering the 1930 tournament, they failed to qualify for Italia 34 and France 38. Another non-entry in Brazil 1950 was followed by a further 10, yeah, 10 unsuccessful qualification attempts before they finally managed to make it to a World Cup Finals in USA 1994. Now, unfortunately, though, the, uh, the Greek side was eliminated in the group stage, losing all three of their games, scoring zero goals and conceding 10. There were two 4-0 defeats, one to Argentina, the other to Bulgaria, and uh, the third game was a 2-0 defeat to the Nigerians. So, uh, not the best of experiences for their, their debut tournament. This was followed by three more tournaments that went by before uh, before they qualified again. Uh, of course, during that period between uh, 94 and when they did qualify again in South Africa 2010, they of course did win Euro 2004. It was a shock result, of course, as, uh, as everyone understands, but the tournament in Athens went down very, very well indeed. And was it Karasteas scoring a header to win the final 1-0? And that undoubtedly is Greece's... Uh, biggest highlight in uh, their international footballing career but like I say they did qualify for South Africa 2010 and this time they were going to pick up some points they uh, they got revenge on Nigeria this time picking up a 2-1 victory to uh, to avenge that 2-0 defeat 16 years prior although they did in fact lose the other two games in the group 2-0 to uh, to South Korea and to Argentina again so two of the teams that they met in the group stage at uh, USA 94 Nigeria and Argentina were actually in the group stage again in uh, South Africa 2010 now uh, whether they'll follow up their uh, their first ever back-to-back -back World Cup qualification campaigns in 2010-2014 with a better performance in the group this time around, I'm not entirely too sure. You'd like to think so, that they'd be making improvements to qualify for uh, their first ever, like I say, back-to-back -back tournaments, but in their group this year, this is of course the first uh, team from Group C that we're covering in this series, the other teams in Group C are the Ivory Coast, Colombia, and Japan so it's a very very strong group to say the least and I, honestly in all fairness I don't think Greece are going to qualify from the group stage yet again that's no real slight on them more so the fact that it is yet another very very strong group and to be fair any of the teams from this group could go through first or second if Greece turn up like they did in Euro 2004 they stand a good chance of going through although I personally don't feel that they will but if you disagree and you, you think they'll get to, to uh, the knockout stage, then feel free to let me know in the comments section down below. Now, uh, a few miscellaneous stats about Greece before we finish. Their highest ever FIFA ranking was actually 8th in the world during uh, June 2008, from April to June in 2008. But uh, currently, as I record this, on the, uh, the 29th of January 2014, they're ranked 12th in the FIFA rankings. So, uh, according to the FIFA rankings, a decent team. Whether they'll do that well in the tournament, though, remains to be seen. Now, the top goal scorer is Nikos Anat... Hang on. Bear with me here. Nikos Anastopoulos. Anastopoulos. Nikos Anastopoulos. I think I'm getting that right. And then they, uh, the most caps held by a Greek national is Georgios Karagounis with 131. So that's going to bring this particular episode to a close, guys. Please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind. Apologies again. As it is quite a short one, although there really wasn't too much to cover for Greece here. So uh, hopefully the next one, which will, I think I'll do Japan or Colombia next. I haven't decided. So uh, let me know down below whether you'd like to see Japan or uh, Japan or uh, any of the team, actually. Japan, Colombia or Ivory Coast in the next episode. Let me know and then I will do the one that you guys select. But that's going to bring this one to a close. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you next time.